the recording? Awesome. And I will share my screen uh, right here. And hopefully we can already see my screen here. So hello, everyone. Let me double check that we are streaming live. Yes. Uh, so hello, my name is Hani and welcome to our live stream. Uh, I work for Education USA, which is a network that provides free and accurate information about study opportunities in the United States. And it is based in the Fulbright Commission in Prague. Um, we, if you are not from Prague in the Czech Republic and you would like some resources, we also have American centers all around the Czech Republic. Uh, so feel free to reach out to those or you can definitely send me an email uh, if you have any questions about studying or working in the United States. And our free services or uh, consultations, they can be in person or online. We have a library where you can borrow books and we do have live streams as today or webinars or other in-person events. So you can find out about everything we do online on our social media, Education USA Check, or if you scan this QR code that you see here, uh, you will get to our monthly newsletter and you will also learn about everything that we do here at Education USA. And today, uh, I will leave the floor to my colleague Anne, uh, and we will talk about Plan B because we dedicated November to um, liberal arts colleges, and uh, we call this webinar a Plan B because sometimes it, uh, you know, it's just you apply to the United States and uh, you possibly get in, but the finances can be a big issue. So today we prepared a plan B for you that uh, you might also try. So, and thank you so much for joining us today. And the floor is yours. Thanks so much for having me. I was just looking at Facebook as well to see if there were any questions coming in. So it's a- uh, Oh yes, great. please. If you're watching the live stream and you have it, like you have questions, feel free to type them on our Facebook uh, Education USA check and we'll be happy to answer. Perfect. All right. Well, um, my name is Anne, as already wonderfully introduced, and I work at a university college in the Netherlands. Um, I want to share uh, a presentation with you today, which was actually created by a group of university colleges. And I'll tell you what actually a university college is in this presentation. But I just wanted to give credit to my colleagues because they worked very hard on the content for this presentation as well, and they deserve some uh, recognition for that. So in the Netherlands, you see that these university colleges that I'll be talking about are spread out throughout the country. I'm actually based at Leiden University College, which is part of Leiden University, but is in the city of The Hague. Now, first and foremost, before uh, we dive into what university colleges are, I want to tell you a bit more about studying in the Netherlands, because maybe you are not familiar. So um, why would you choose the Netherlands? We've asked our students this, and what they told us was basically they chose the Netherlands for a couple of reasons, which I will outline. Um, one of the reasons was that it really gave them peace of mind in the sense that you'll get a really good quality education in the Netherlands and it's close by to home as well. So it's very easy to travel to um, and the degrees are recognized around the world, not just because the universities are highly ranked, but also because the degrees are uh, accredited. Um, also, for those of you who have ever been to the Netherlands, English is very widely spoken here. Uh, which means that you don't really have to learn any Dutch when you come to the Netherlands. Of course, we do encourage it, especially if you want to stay after graduation, but that means it's very easy to live here. Some students also listed the student experience. There are lots of clubs and extracurricular activities on offer by the Dutch universities, so you can do more than just studying. And plus, it's a really nice country to live, apart from the climate, because, of course, in the winter it gets a bit cold, it can get a bit rainy as well. Um, but very similar to what the climate might be like in Prague. Uh, it's a very nice environment. So you get to cycle everywhere. It feels generally very safe um, and it's an easy, easy place to live. And in terms of uh, what else you can expect as a student, all universities offer exchange opportunities. So that means you can spend a semester abroad. Many of us also have partners in the United States. Um, so you can spend a semester at a college of your choice in the United States if you wanted to. Um, and maybe in terms of what to expect in terms of class time, 
you'll spend about 10 to 16 hours of class time. And then we expect you to do about 15 to 20 hours of self-study as well. Our academic year is quite long, longer than the UK, for example. We usually start at the end of August already. So you get a lot of class time for your money. In terms of the cost of attendance, I think this is a very important point for you guys. The majority of you, I assume, will be Czech citizens, which means you're part of the European Union. And that means your tuition fee is controlled by the Dutch government because they basically subsidize education for all EU citizens. So you will pay somewhere between 2,500 and 5,000 euros. The majority of programs is in the 2,500 range. There are just a few exceptions. Now, if you happen to not have a Czech passport, then your tuition fee is a little bit higher because unfortunately we don't receive a subsidy, but it is still more affordable than studying in many other countries. So this is something that can sometimes help um, when you try to make that decision or when you're trying to convince your parents. And in terms of career opportunities, what we see is that a lot of students want to go for a career afterwards in the Netherlands. There are many uh, multinationals here, so that's definitely a possibility. Students also sometimes use the bachelor in the Netherlands as a stepping stone towards a master at a prestigious institution anywhere in the world, including places in Europe, the UK or the US. We uh, often have graduates who end up in really nice places for their master's degree. So that can be a really nice kind of stepping stone towards your career. It is very common to do a master after your bachelor in the Netherlands, but of course you don't have to. With your bachelor, you can also enter the labor market. So it all depends on where you want to go and what you want to do after graduation. That's really amazing. Let me just jump in real quick. Uh, sure. Students definitely, they apply to the U.S. And uh, it is very different because in the United States, you don't really take uh, that, you know, like four year stretch and then go straight to master. So you can definitely start here at a university college and then move on. And uh, it makes sense. that Yeah. Yeah, it's a different model. Um... Uh -huh. And maybe also good to mention is that the universities at uh, the degrees at a research university are three years in length mm -hmm. and masters are usually one or two years. So within your four or five years, you could have your bachelor and your master both. <laughs> Very different system. So just to give you a quick insight into the higher education system in the Netherlands, I already mentioned uh, research universities. What we call research universities are academic universities. So that means your professors will have a PhD degree. Uh, a lot of the stuff they do day to day is academic research. And then they learn also, uh, or they teach you how to apply that knowledge into practice. So you will always kind of understand the basics of the fundamentals of academic research and kind of the critical thinking element that comes with that and then also the application. We also have something called universities of applied sciences, which we will not go into depth, but I just want to highlight them. These are the more practical universities. So if you want to train for a specific career, for example, let's say you want to become a elementary school teacher or physical therapist, you would enroll in a university of applied science because the focus is on applying your knowledge. Um, other schools that fall into this category are hotel schools, for example. Um, so in the Netherlands, you'll find both. And the tricky thing is that some degrees are offered at both. For example, business, you can study at a research university or at the University of Applied Sciences. So when you try to make that decision, um, it's good to do a bit more research and figure out what type of learner you are and what type of environment suits you. Maybe also good to mention is that uh, universities of applied sciences, because they are more practical, they usually include an internship and they are four years in length, whereas uh, research universities tend not to include an internship, although we do usually have an exchange semester where you can do a semester abroad, and they are three years in length, as I said. Um, so then it's common to do a master afterwards. So those are the two big kind of categories that we have, and we like everything really standardized, very similar to Germany, although don't tell anyone I said that. Um, and then what follows from that is within the research university model, you'll find two options. You'll have basically regular university programs like you are very familiar with. You might want to study psychology or economics or industrial engineering. Those are all degrees that are offer, offered at research universities and sometimes also applied sciences. Um, what makes the Netherlands similar to the UK, for example, is that often you apply for a certain program and then the curriculum is pretty set. You don't have a lot of flexibility in there. So the college will basically say, well, if you want to become a psychologist or you want to study psychology, these are all the subjects that you have to follow. And then maybe you have two or three free choice subjects in the third year. 
But then we came up with a new model, which is called the University Colleges, and they are inspired by American liberal arts and sciences programs. So, so far, you might have wondered, why did I attend this presentation? This is why. We're going to delve into these a little bit more deeply. Um, the biggest difference between a university college and a regular university program is in the style of teaching and in the curriculum. But as you can see from the way we try to draw this graph, they are part of research universities. So to give you an example, I work at Leiden University. Leiden University is a, a research university with a long tradition in the Netherlands. We have 15 English taught programs of which uh, 14 are various different programs in the field of data science and AI, international relations and organizations, security studies, psychology. And then one of the 15 programs is the university college where we offer liberal arts and sciences. Um, but it's a little bit special and I'll go into what that means uh, in a little bit. What do you think, Hani? So far so good? So far so good. I really love to just show the connection to the United States and to Britain because you really took like the two of the best that the both countries can offer and put it together, which is really interesting. And I, I argue the pilot, you know, like, you know, going, the being the first one who combined these two together and created university colleges. Well, I think at, in the Netherlands, they're quite popular now. So the mm -hmm. oldest one is 25 years old. Leiden mm -hmm. University College is 13 years old now. So we've, we're starting to build some, some momentum. Um, mm -hmm. But it would be great if it got picked up by other European countries as well, because I think it's a model that's really suitable for some students. I agree. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. All right. So let's delve a little bit deeper. So what actually defines a university college? A university college is usually an honors college. So it's a slightly more selective college within the research university. Um, and we teach liberal arts and sciences curriculum. So the American style liberal arts and sciences is kind of part of this program, um, although we all do it in a slightly different way. So that's something that's worth looking into if you're really interested in these colleges. Um, and I'll give you some examples in a little bit. Uh, another part that's really important of a university college is that it's a close-knit academic and social community, just like the traditional colleges in the UK, uh, for example, within Oxford and Cambridge, you have these colleges that have really close-knit environments. So we wanted to bring that inspiration to this concept as well. And in a lot of cases, that also means there's some form of on-campus living. So you're not just studying, but you're also living on the campus where you're learning to create that close-knit community. Um, and finally, a really important factor of a university college is that it's highly international, both in student body as well as staff. It, the exact rates and percentages per college differ. Um, but for example, at Leiden University College, we're at 65% international students. So you definitely wouldn't be the only one. You'll find lots of students from different countries in Europe and a couple from outside Europe as well. So what's actually the British influence? I mentioned this link already a little bit to these colleges. So within Oxford and Cambridge, you have these really traditional colleges and students who join them, they become part of, of a community and they also have a bit of pride of that. Um, and we, the way we've created that is basically by putting the university college, while it's part of a larger university, usually in its own environment. Um, sometimes that means it's its own building. Sometimes it means it's a campus that's kind of remote. Um, but it's kind of this this kind of yeah special community that you, you become part of. What's also important is that the colleges are small in scale. So the colleges in the Netherlands vary in size. Usually it's between 300 to 900 students in the college in total, which means between 100 and 300 students per intake. Um, and also we offer small scale classes. So we have a special accreditation from the government, which allows us to really keep classes small, which means it's a little bit more expensive, um, but it's a really good way for you to engage much more with the material. There's a really strong focus on extracurricular activities. So you do more outside of your studies than just um, only focus on studying. Um, and the extracurricular activities also are kind of tied to what happens in the college if you want to. So we have a lot of students who start their own clubs and their own societies, for example. There's a lot of room and a lot of invitation for you to do stuff to broaden your horizons because that's kind of the idea behind this type of learning. And I've already mentioned it sort of, usually the colleges are residential, meaning uh, you would live on campus. Um, it varies a bit from college to college, whether that's the entire duration or just a part of the studies. And some of them don't have it at all. 
So it is worth looking into this when you're exploring university college, whether there is a residential aspect or not, um, and for how long you would live on campus. But you'll find different uh, style campuses. For example, University College Utrecht, which is one of the colleges I made this with, have kind of an American style campus with a green a space in the middle and then all the buildings around a bit more uh, remote to the side of the city whereas uh, Leiden has an urban campus meaning it's a building right in the city center it's a mm -hmm. high rise uh, where students live and also study so different models available that's really cool and that's very special for Czech students because when uh, Czech students study at a university in the Czech Republic there is no campus life like they don't get to experience it so it's wonderful that uh, you provide that for sure. That's very nice. That's great yeah. to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then in terms of the American influence, let me go into that a little bit as well. So what we took from America was the kind of multi and interdisciplinarity. So this idea of liberal arts and sciences where you get to explore different things because you're still young. Um, and actually for anyone of any age, it's valuable to explore different topics. But um, especially when you're in this kind of developmental stage where you're trying to figure out what suits you. Um, and just, I mean, I don't know what it's like for you, honey, but when I think back to my university days, I studied a specific topic, but I don't remember a lot of the actual factual stuff that I learned. The thing that I remember is mostly the skills, the way of thinking, the way of reasoning. I, would you agree that that's the same for you? Exactly. And I have to say that it was very hard for me to decide that I had to decide so early on and I had like... I couldn't change it, you know, whereas when studying liberal arts, there is a lot of flexibility, which is something that I advise a lot because I had to decide and then I had to stick with it. And I, I decided, you know, it, I decided, well, it was a really good major, but, you know, the pressure was difficult at, at that time. So, and again, as you said, and um, I remember the conversations, I remember uh, the hands-on activities. I don't really remember the facts because it's something you can Google, but I remember the experience and the, yeah, talking with teachers and, and then internships for sure. Yeah, I can totally relate to that. I had exactly the same experience as well in my studies that it was really hard to pick something. And for some students, it can also seem really daunting, right? Like I'm going into a bachelor, but I don't know yet what I'm going to major in or what I'm going to specialize in. Or actually, maybe you like that idea, but maybe your parents are a bit scared of it. That's also possible. Um, but what we see in the research is that actually, like I mentioned before already, the bachelor, you're so much in development still um, and it doesn't really matter exactly what you study. Of course, if you have a certain career uh, path in mind, if you want to become a doctor, then you have some restrictions, right? You have to go to medical school. But for a lot of jobs later on, there's a lot of variety in where people come from and where they end up in the end. Um, so then something like this that really plays on your um, enthusiast, uh, uh, enthusiasm and your willingness to learn and your curiosity is a great program and a great um, uh, yeah, thing to keep your excitement for learning. And also you get encouraged by your fellow classmates as well. All right, let me go on. Otherwise I talk forever. Um, so you'll find multi and interdisciplinary programs. And that also means you have free choice. And that looks different at different uh, universities um, because in some cases you have to put together your curriculum entirely by picking uh, courses. And then you usually have a tutor who helps you match courses that make sense. Um, in other cases, uh, university colleges work with majors that help you streamline it a little bit. Um, but usually there's quite a lot of um, elective space as well, what we call. So elective is when you have free choice uh, subjects. Um, usually as a big theme, you'll find that university colleges will have arts and humanities or humanities, engineering, science, and social sciences, um, which means that, yeah, you could be combining, uh, you know, law, a law subject, which would fall within the social science realm with uh, sociology, which falls more on, no, that's also social sciences, art history, which falls under humanities with biology, which falls under the sciences. And they usually require you to combine a little bit from these different fields. And some colleges even have a specialization with a focus on engineering as well. So that's maybe useful for students who are playing with that engineering mindset as well. 
Um, and usually throughout your curriculum, you specialize a little bit more. So you start quite broad and you start with a kind of option to choose and taste different things. And then either through your major or through a theme or through the subjects that you choose, you tend to specialize a bit more towards a master. Now, I talked about masters already a little bit. Um, especially after a university college, it's relatively common for people to do a master because that's going to be the thing that helps them specialize a bit more. Um, and that's the thing that's also going to help them get a foot in the door with a job. But what we see is because the university college is quite challenging, it prepares them for a master really well. Every student I've spoken to, every master student um, says that the master is usually quite doable for them because the bachelor has has really prepared them for it very well. That is amazing. And I would like to just point out here, I do work for the Fulbright Commission. So guys, if you if you do your bachelor's at a university college and you have a Czech citizenship, feel free then to check out Fulbright scholarships if you decide to do your master's in the United States. That might be a great opportunity for you to apply for a Fulbright scholarship and uh, start at a university college and then go uh, to the United States for your master's with the Fulbright scholarship. Yeah, it's actually a perfect match. So we see that a lot of students do that also because they really want that American experience, but maybe they're too young to go that far away. And then for their masters, they're ready for it. Um, and uh, the masters or the, the masters in the US accept the degree from the Netherlands uh, because the standard here is three years and it is accredited. So we see that our students do very well and they end up in really prestigious places actually. So who's actually a good fit for a university college? In general, we're looking for academically strong uh, students because it is an honors college, meaning that you need to be able to handle the academic base here. So we are looking for a kind of baseline. It doesn't mean you have to be absolutely brilliant and, you know, uh, have the best top grades in your class. Um, but we're looking for slightly above average, I would say, to, to give a, a bit of an indication of whether you're going to be successful. We're looking for students who are intellectually curious because of these small classrooms. We really want you to engage and to uh, uh, partake in the discussions in the classroom as well. Um, and we're looking for students who are also uh, kind of more socially involved. So we want to engage in this community either in the college or give back to society around the college as well. So this kind of social involvement is quite an important point as well. So when you're trying to figure out what the right fit is for you, so which you see, you see is university college, that's the abbreviation we use, uh, what should you be looking at? Now, we should, uh, I would recommend to look at the curriculum options. So, you know, what are the, uh, how much freedom is there? Do you get to completely compile it yourself or, sorry, or do you uh, have to go into a major? And if so, do the majors suit you? Um, is the topic that you want to study available in this college? Uh, what is the teaching style? Um, for example, some colleges use problem-based learning. Does that suit you or does it not suit you at all? What is the residential structure? Is it within a city or within a small town? Is there housing or not? And also very much the atmosphere and student life. I've been to a couple of university colleges and I generally find that there is quite a good vibe, a good atmosphere um, because of this community feeling. You can really sense it. But all of them are slightly different. We have all a slightly mm -hmm. different identity. So figuring out which one suits you, you can do that by chatting with our students, try to make use of all the online visit possibilities. A lot of university colleges will have webinars or online experiences. Um, and if you can, of course, to visit, but that's not possible for everyone. I agree that choosing the best fit can be very challenging. So it's great that you connect students to your alumni and they can talk to other people and ask the questions, which is amazing. That's a great source of information. Yeah, it's it takes time, but it gives you kind of insights that you would otherwise not get. And I think that uh, is something really special. And let me actually, uh, because the next slide deals with, okay, how does the application actually word, work? Um, and a big difference is that within the Netherlands, we generally are quite an open university system. We really believe in access to education. So in the Netherlands, we stream the students kind of into a pre-university or pre-university of applied sciences or a vocational stream already, uh, stream already in high school. Um, so a lot of programs in the Netherlands, if you have the right high school diploma and the right subjects, then you will be given a conditional offer. Um, what's different is that university colleges do have a selection procedure. So that is uh, something that is that you have to be aware of. But of course, since you guys are already exploring the United States, you're already prepared mentally. 
um, to uh, to go through a selection process. I can imagine that sometimes it seems a bit daunting. Um, in general, I would say, yeah, you guys, when you're preparing for it and you go through it, you'll be fine, honestly. Um, but what I'll tell you a little bit more is about what that actually looks like. Um, in general, within the colleges, you'll find the most common uh, option is a September intake. You don't see so much um, another uh, February intake anymore at the moment, but I think that aligns pretty well with your um, academic year. Yes. Um, what you'll also find because it is selective is that you'll find earlier deadlines. So um, this between December 1st and June 1st in general. So you have to be prepared to start on time. So what are the similarities uh, between a university college and any other degree in the Netherlands? Let me first outline that. So the very first thing we want you to do is to register in StudiLink, which is a national registration system. You create an account and you say for which program you want to apply. And you have a maximum of four options in StudiLink. So you can have four university colleges or you can have four different programs in different or the same university of your choice. Um, there are some limitations if you apply for a selective program like medicine or psychology, then there's a maximum of two. But university colleges luckily don't fall within that band. So you have a maximum of four. Um, and then the second thing you have to do is submit the application directly to the university of your choice. Um, because unfortunately, the StudiLink system isn't advanced enough to take all those documents. So the universities will have their own application systems. They do communicate with StudiLink, but then you have to upload your documents. And usually that is something like your transcript um, and maybe your uh, identity documents. So the very first thing we check is whether your diploma is equivalent to the high school diploma in the Netherlands um, that you need to enter university. Um, I quickly looked up the requirements for the Czech Republic and put them on this slide as well to give you a general indication of what is required within the Netherlands. There can be some variation uh, within the Netherlands, but usually because we have some standardization in Europe, if you have the diploma that gives access to university in the Czech Republic, that usually works in the Netherlands as well. I now then, have a question. Do you have yes. to pay for your application to submit it? It is more and more common for universities to ask for an application fee, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, not every university. So if funds are a problem, you can also pick them out for that reason to see mm -hmm. um, if that makes a difference. Leiden mm -hmm. University charges 100 euros for a normal application to a bachelor program. The application fee for the university college is only 50 euros. So if you're only okay. applying for the university college, yeah, it's only 50 euros. So that makes it a little bit um, easier or, yeah. Affordable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or acceptable. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and let me actually uh, add this one as well. Whoop. I'll be there in one second. Sorry. I think that is a very good question. Um, and we see that it's occurring more and more actually um, in the Netherlands to see an application fee just because the amount of applications that we have to process is just so high at the moment. Definitely, um, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that just makes it challenging, basically. All right, we're going to go to the next slide. So what's different mm -hmm. between a regular application for a university and then for a university college? In general, we have, uh, again, American-inspired holistic application process, which means, yes, the academic transcript is the backbone of your application, but we look at more than that. So we look at who are you as a student, what kind of extracurriculars are you interested in or are you doing already? We understand that not everyone has done 100 extracurriculars during high school because, yeah, that's not always possible for everyone or you hadn't thought about it. So we can be flexible with that, but we want to see an indic indication or of what kind of stuff you've done outside of your studies and what ki kind of student you are. So are you an active student? Um, we look at fit as well. So the motivation is extra important. We usually ask for a motivation letter um, or something of the sort, maybe a motivation video sometimes even, to get an idea of why you want to study a program like this and why it is suitable for you. And general, uh, university colleges will ask for higher grade requirements. So you can see, depending on the curriculum that you're doing, there are some different... Uh, uh, in the, I gave an indication just to give you an idea, but uh, again, it varies from college to college. There are some university colleges that are less selective as well. So if you don't fall within this realm, there are some possibilities as well. 
Um, the Czech Republic uh, requirements, I got them from our own website. So those are the requirements for Leiden, but I assume uh, they're very much on par with what other universities uh, might ask. So you can see the addition is the scores of very good. And finally, I might ask for extra documentation, such as a letter of motivation, letter of recommendation, a CV, an essay, or an interview. This varies a bit from college to college, but it's very common to see a combination of these documents required. Yeah, clear. This is this is actually very similar uh, to what students are getting ready now. So that's amazing that uh, see I, I see that influence there that you know it it is a very holistic application that doesn't only uh, look at your scores from your high school, but it also wants to see uh, the recommendation letters and your essay and so forth to see that you are really gonna be happy on that campus and you're really gonna uh, grow as a person and as a student. So that's amazing. Yeah, I like the terminology that you picked because indeed it's ultimately about finding the right fit. So we are looking for students who are going to thrive and who are going to be successful. And that's a mutual process. It's students who bring something to the table for us and for fellow students, but also students who are going to be able to enjoy um, and, and make the most of what we try to offer. So it's definitely a mutual process and there's not one fit for all. There's different people that fit into different boxes. So uh, maybe to summarize, why would you want to consider a university college? Um, in general, if you're really highly motivated, uh, but also quite open-minded and internationally focused, it might be a really good fit because you're going to enc enc encounter students from different countries with different backgrounds. Uh, and we see that there's a lot of discussion also in classrooms. And sometimes that can get really difficult when you have different political beliefs or you come from a situation where, you know, there's there's conflict in the world at the moment that leads to really awkward conversations. So you need to be well, uh, ready for that. Um, and you'll also find other similar minded students there. So that's also really nice. If you recognize yourself in that, then you might get a feeling of, oh, I might fit there and I might find like minded people there. Of course, the ability to have flexibility for some people that can be really daunting and then it's not the right fit. Um, of course, you do get some guidance, so don't worry. Uh, every college will have either tutors or some system set up to help you through that process. So you're not completely left on your own, but it's useful for students who want that flexibility to kind of forge their own path. Um, generally, as I mentioned, because they are honors college, uh, students who are academically strong and who enjoy a challenge in terms of, you know, uh, a mental a mental challenge um, and students who like to be engaged and like to give back to the community on campus or the local community as well. That's the general overview. I think that gave you a pretty good idea, hopefully, of the university colleges. For sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing the overview and introducing university colleges and what it has to offer, because I think that all the students, when they create their college list, it you know they they put in the dream schools and they put in the reach schools and the safe schools and I always tell them you know this is wonderful but also create other plans except for the U.S. So this is an amazing plan B basically that is just so um, it's excellent you know like it has everything that they're looking for in the United States it's just closer. You know, so that's really something that I wanted them to hear that it is possible to study closer to home and they'll be as prepared as they would from the United States and they can definitely continue if the dream is to go to the US, they can definitely apply later on. Yeah, I think in that sense, this is a really interesting collaboration because mm -hmm. indeed uh, we would love to give you those different opportunities. And if you do end up with a master's in the US, that means we've been very successful. For sure. Or they'll just, you know, fall in love with uh, Netherlands and they'll stay here. Yeah, for sure. That's also possible. That's also <laughs> possible. So I have a couple of slides to introduce Leiden University College. Mm -hmm. Shall I go ahead? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. All right. So just to thank my counterparts again, I have to tell them at the <laughs> beginning and at the end. Um so just to introduce Leiden University College briefly. So I wrote down 50% international students, but actually it's an old statistic. Uh, we're around 65% international students. So there's a lot of international students here um, mm -hmm. and a very beneficial uh, class size. So the average is 20 students in a class. 
um, meaning you really get a lot of personal interaction. This photo was taken in one of our classrooms. They're always set up in a kind of U-shape to encourage um, discussion. So it's very easy to, to learn from the teachers and the teachers also really get to know you. It's very um, difficult to hide, you know? Yes, you are not <laughs> you hiding. You have to be prepared. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. You're not hiding in the back of the classroom. No, yeah. so you have to be prepared for that. Um, so funnily enough, we're uh, an urban campus, meaning we're right in the city center, all in one building, and we have 400 studio, studio apartments. So the students live on campus in year one and year two. Uh, we have an intake of 200, so that makes 400 students living on campus right in this building. And you saw it at the beginning of the slide. I'll just put it up again. Um, it's a really modern building, really sunny, a really nice place to be. And this, this photo is taken from our terrace. Um, I'm also looking at the terrace. It's right outside my office. So students have access to that as well. Um, and it's really close to the city center. So really easy to go into town and to make use of the facilities. The focus in our college is on global challenges. So we have identified a couple of global challenges that we kind of themed everything around. Peace and justice, diversity, sustainability and prosperity. So in the first year, you follow courses about these global challenges, as well as some courses um, that you need for general knowledge, so as academic, such as academic writing and uh, mathematics and statistics. But then you also already have some electives in the first year. And then in the second year, you choose a major and your major is your specialization. And it's kind of the lens through which you look at these global challenges. So uh, we have six majors. You see them in the outside circle and they are in different topics. We are very well known for politics and uh, law here in Leiden. So the world politics major and the international justice major are two really large ones. But we also have majors. Uh, well, actually, governance, economics and development is also a really large major. But we also have majors more in the sciences, such as Earth Energy and Sustainability, which focuses on uh, Earth System Science, um, Sustainability Science, and Global Public Health, where you learn about um, uh, kind of how to make sure we have a healthy globe and how to use the right policies to get there. Um, there's also some extra options. For example, you can do a minor and a major or combine different, uh, different majors together. So a lot of students like to combine governance, economics and development, which is really focused on policy with earth energy and sustainability if they want to get into uh, sustainability later. Um, then we have kind of themed clusters of subjects. So students who like journalism, they can take a journalism minor, psychology, gender studies or philosophy. Um, there is also a study abroad semester that I mentioned already, and we have partners all over the world. I think we have 250 partners to choose from. Um, also a couple of liberal arts colleges in America that you could go to. Um, and we have some special programs as well. We have a double degree in law for Dutch speakers with the Leiden Law School, but also the one that I really want to highlight, the electives at the Royal Academy of Arts, where you can do fine arts or music or uh, classical singing voice, for example, and you can combine them with your de degree here at Leiden University College. So you can explore your creative talents as well. Now, to give an idea of what it looks like, I compiled a couple more photos. The students, as I said, live in the city center, but you see a lot of green in the background as well because we're right near a forest. Um, so it's very easy to go out of the building and go into nature as well. Students have a common room on their floor. So their studio apartment, they have their own bathroom and kitchen. Very luxurious. I never had that as a student. Um, and then they share uh, a common room uh, where they can hang out with students on their floor. So there's a really strong floor uh, kind of vibe. Floorship. <laughs> yes, floorship. I don't know how to say it. Floor community. Um, I already mentioned there's a really strong international community and there's a lot of activities and, and events. So we have the Fortuna Student Association that organizes a lot um, mm -hmm. and there's stuff outside of them even as well. So to give you an example, students always organize a hitchhiking competition every fall and every spring break. Uh, as you can see, they picked Prague at some point. You see it on the banner, uh -huh, maybe uh -huh. really small. Yeah. Um, and the, the person who gets there first uh, wins. Um, <laughs> then we have a pantomime, which is a musical that students and staff participate in. There's a ski trip. And this is just, I don't know, these are just three of the hundreds of examples of things that students mm -hmm. do outside of their studies. Um, and finally, maybe good to mention, we are very close to the beach, actually. Only 20 minutes by tram. 
Um, maybe in winter, it's a bit windy, although that's also nice sometimes to clear your head. But in the summer, I kid you not, this photo was really taken in The Hague. It's not Ibiza. So it's oh, nice to, amazing. yeah, to hang out and get some sun or get some fresh air or go surfing, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms, of, in terms of finances, I talked about the finances in general for the Netherlands already. I gave an indication. Um, I assume most of you will have EU passports, so you'll pay 4,900 euros. It's a bit more expensive than a standard bachelor in the Netherlands, but a lot more uh, affordable than if you were coming from outside the EU. Um, and I've listed some other costs on this slide as well. The campus fee that you pay only the first two years when you live on campus and the estimated rent. Now, good to know anyone who is 18 years or above, which is most students, they qualify for a rent subsidy of 185 euros, which mm -hmm. means that you effectively pay around 400, I think by now it's around 450 euros in rent. So that mm -hmm. makes it much more affordable. So the cost of living that we've mentioned here actually uh, includes the rent for a lot of students if you live on mm -hmm. a student budget. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the application, we look at a couple of factors that I already mentioned. We look at your motivation. So do you understand the program, what liberal arts and sciences is all about? We look at your academic achievements. So are you the right fit? Can you handle the level? We look at your English proficiency through some standard tests like IELTS or TOEFL um, and your maths proficiency. If you don't have the right math proficiency, we are quite flexible with that because you can also, uh, if you're, the rest of your application is strong, you can still be admitted to the college but then you'll have to make sure you pass the math course in the first semester. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, your experiences. So who are you as a student and what have you done outside of your studies? What are your interests and what will you bring to the table? We have actually an early bird application deadline of the 1st of December. And the main mm -hmm. benefit of that is that you would get an answer already middle of March. So we encourage everyone who is able to, to apply by the 1st of December. Our regular deadline is the 15th of March, and then the outcome will be announced around the end of May. So still early enough, um, but maybe good to be aware of. Mm -hmm. so we actually have an experience day this week. I don't imagine anyone will travel to the Netherlands, but we are live streaming it as well. So students can join online. And we also do individual meetings online or on campus. Um, so you're very welcome to join those as well. I put some QR codes here in case you got really excited and you want to know more. You can sign up for the um, online experience day that's on Thursday, or you can sign up for email updates as well if you wanted to. Definitely. Thank you so much, because there is still plenty of time to apply. And I think it is Oh, it sounds really appealing, even to me, you know, like, I, I thought that I would never go back to school anymore, but this sounded really amazing, and I love the view of the dormitories and so forth, so it is a really good catch. Thank you so much for introducing university colleges to Czech students, and I really hope that uh, they would consider it, you know, for their future studies. Yes, I hope so too. I hope that it was enlightening. Um, I'm noticing often that even though we've been around for 13 years, that mm -hmm. students don't know about it. So I really appreciate mm -hmm. that you got so excited and you wanted to share it with them. For sure. Thank you. I saw that we do have some live um, students who are watching, but I do not see any questions so far. So guys who are you, what, who, who are watching, please, if you have any questions, feel free to type them and we will answer them later. But as of now, thank you so much for coming and for introducing university colleges and I'll be happy to stay in touch with you, Anne. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you for the time.